What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Igmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we were messing around with some IC2 stuff. Yep. And I ended up making another generator, and then I hooked up our battery, our bat box, just say battery, uh, to power our insulated tin cable that comes over and powers the rest of our machines. It sends the power over to them, right? Uh, so, yeah, I've done that kind of off camera here and got this all set up. Um, today, I think we're going to take a step back from IC2, though. Uh, what i am kind of been doing is I've been flying around the world exploring some more stuff. Just kind of looking for anything out of the ordinary. Um, I did find down here. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, right here. It looks like a meteor or something dropped down. Now, this isn't the same kind of a thing as you would see from, like, industrial, or I'm sorry, from uh, applied energistics. It's not the same type of meteor. Those are like a fairly round sometimes there's lava in there but yeah, this one looks like a different type so I don't, I'm not sure what that is I didn't really explore that too much but I did find over here another pyramid this one's made out of stairs and it's all sandstone I thought that was kind of interesting so that's our second one that we have found our first one here's our base our first one was over here and this looks a lot like the old Mayan style like similar to like the uh the pyramid that I built in Hermitcraft season one really is what that one looked like uh, this one also had spawners in it, cave spider spawners, so I didn't really explore that one either. Uh, I didn't feel like that was something that we wanted to do right now since we only have unenchanted iron armor and we're not even wearing, like, real armor on our feet. It's just to prevent fall damage. So, yeah, we'll go check that out later when we have more armor and more, well, I guess more damage, really. This cactus broadsword isn't the greatest either. Uh, but what I wanted to work on today, um, since I was over and exploring around, uh, in the desert here, I found a couple of desert temples. I'm not sure. Do they show up on the map? I'm not seeing them. Anyway, I found two different desert temples here. Uh, and I went down into the desert temple, and I got the loot out of them. And now we have, like, all these capacitors, and I don't even remember what else we got out of there. There was, like, a lot of things, and now our chests are quite full. Uh, I guess these small storage crates are quite full of stuff. We got extra armor and... Uh, I think there was a couple of swords we got out. Yeah, these ender swords. Um, anyway, so we have a lot of space being taken up by that. I had to move all of our paper over here. <laughs> uh, really what I wanted to do was start working towards getting ourselves some digital storage. I want to start working towards applied energistics. Now, I'm not trying to get into auto crafting and any of that stuff right now. I just really want a way where we can store all of our stuff and have a way to search for it and have it in a more compact means. And then eventually we'll upgrade to auto crafting and stuff when we get really into AE. So I was looking at how to do this, right? So one of the first things we're gonna have to do is figure out how to power the system. So an energy acceptor is the easiest way to do it. Um, an ME controller is another way that you can power it, but that requires an energy acceptor. So we'll start here at the energy acceptor phase. So to get this done, we do need vacuum tubes, which is me and the engineer's workbench, the thing right in front of us. It does require the crafting components blueprint and nickel plate, redstone, copper, wire, and glass. All of this stuff is fairly simple for us to do at this point. So those aren't a big deal. The redstone engineering block, copper, constantan. We haven't made constantan yet, but that is going to be coming up here very soon, I do believe. We just have to make the alloy kiln, right? And it's just copper and nickel. Not a big deal. So I think that's going to be pretty easy to accomplish. Uh, engineering processor. So this is another thing that we have to take a look at. In order to make any of the processors in Applied Energistics, you need these ins uh, the inscriber presses. And I think these are only found in the meteors. There are recipes if we get into mystical agriculture where we can make more. But I don't think this is the only way to get them. I think you can find these in the meteors. I haven't poked into any of them yet. So I'm not sure 100%, but that's generally speaking, when there are the applied energistics meteors, that's how you get those presses. I'm trying to sleep before it becomes nighttime and we get monsters all over the place. Okay, so moving on from here. Uh, so presses, I think we have that covered. Silicon, uh, you can get silicon by nether quartz dust smelting that. So I think we should be okay uh is there yeah if nothing else we can just do the manual quartz grindstone but i think we can uh do that in the macerator or some other means either way 
Uh, moving on from there, the inscriber, this machine is how it all gets put together and how we make those processors. So this does require some stuff from IC2, which we haven't done yet, the reinforced stone. Uh, however, in this mod pack, there's a fairly easy recipe for you just need grout, clay dust, which you get from either using a hammer on clay, you get one of them, or you can put it through the macerator and get four. So that's not a big deal. Yeah. So, and you get 16 of those. Okay. Uh, that seems pretty simple. Machine case does require advanced machine casing, and it does require more than reinforced stone. So advanced machine casing, this is probably going to be our first stop here. <laughs> I know there's a lot of poking around, trying to figure out where to go. Um, but that is one of the quests that are coming up. So we need to make ourselves a blast furnace that'll unlock this quest. We can make the advanced machine casings, and then we should be able to look at making the inscriber and getting into applied energistics, right? So let's do this. Let's make ourselves a blast furnace. Well, I guess we need an electric heater, a blast furnace, and one universal fluid cell. So there's some text over here, which is pretty important to read. Uh, the blast furnace, when supplied with heat and compressed air, turns iron into steel. So we need compressed air, and then we need the electric heater for the blast furnace. Now, I've messed with this a long time ago, and it has been quite some time since I last played around with this. Hopefully, I remember how this works. I think it's the copper things have to touch each other. And you give this one power, and that gives this thing the heat power that it needs. I think. Anyway, uh, to supply with compressed air, you'll need to craft at least one universal fluid cell. Universal fluid cells are crafted with four tin casings around a glass pane in a plus shape. The cells are hidden in JEI as they take up a lot of pages, and the fluid containers in JEI tend to cause some lag. You fill the cell with compressed air by putting it in a compressor. So this seems pretty straightforward to do. So we need 10, uh, 10 casings. So we have to get 10 plates. Let's start here. Uh, 10 plates, and then we have to run that through our metal press one more time. I think on the extruding setting. I can never remember the name of the setting. If I look at it, I'll remember. Uh, no, it's just a rolling setting. So we put it through on the rolling setting. I guess I'll put the other one in there. And that gives us our two tin item casings. I do need to give this thing some power over here. Let's grab some coal real quick so we can <laughs> start powering up our bat box one more time. Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to grab the iron. Wanted to scroll these items out. I shift clicked and now we have some weird lag for some reason. What is even happening? I don't know. That is so odd. Okay, let's go put the coal in our generators over here and get power going for next time. So we'll just do it like that. That's fine. That'll go in this one. This one goes in here. Okay, so there's our 10 item casings, and it said that had to go around a glass pane. I can't remember if we had any extras laying around. It doesn't look like it. Well, we have these. Can you use the colored ones? I know some recipes are very specific and you have to use a regular. Doesn't look like that works, does it? All right, let's try. Oh, we don't have any glass made, do we? Okay, well, that's easy enough. You know what, let's smelt down a full stack of sand. Might as well do it. <laughs> Doesn't really hurt much. Okay. So now we'll turn the glass into panes and we'll turn a pane into a universal fluid cell. Awesome. Now it said we had to put that into a compressor. Did we make a compressor yet? Yes, we did. Okay. So that goes in here. So just the empty universal fluid cell gets compressed. Let me grab some of these, I guess, to speed this up a little bit. That gets compressed into a universal fluid cell with air, one bucket. All right, so that is pretty easy. Just throw these guys back in here. So that is a couple of things done. Uh, let's get back into this quest. Okay, so we have the universal fluid cell, that's complete. So electric heater and blast furnace. Electric heater and blast furnace. All right, so we need iron item casings. We need a heat conductor. So that's copper plates plus rubber. That's fairly straightforward. Uh, electronic circuits. So we've seen this recipe before. And then an RE battery, the rechargeable battery. Yep, we've done that. All right, so those aren't that bad. And then the blast furnace is a basic machine casing. So that's a lot of iron and some aluminum. Uh, another heat 
What was the thing? Heat conductor and some more iron item casings. Okay, I'll go ahead and get the rest of these components crafted here. We'll just do that off camera and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so a little bit of crafting later. Here is our blast furnace to go with the electric heater. I do notice it says power tier four on it. So I'm not sure if we can even power this thing or how this is going to work. So that's something we're going to have to figure out. Maybe there's a lot more IC2 stuff that we're going to have to do in order to get this done. I don't know. But let's see if we can place this. How about which way is that face? Okay, right there. So that is charging up full of power. It's got zero who out of zero who max. Oh, add coils to increase heat output. Right. Okay. So industrial coil, these things. Aha. So we need to add in 10. Yeah, 10 coils to increase the heat output. Now, if I place that, yeah, that's facing the wrong way. So we need to face it this way, I do believe. Except that's facing up now. Huh. Uh, this way? Okay. So that says zero heat, zero heat. Yeah, I think we need the coils in there and even for it to even make any heat at all. Okay. So we got a little bit more stuff to do. So that requires us to get uh, some copper extruded out into the wires and continue on here. Now I have taken the opportunity since we had all of the IC2 machines set up to take all of our raw ores and smelt them all down, double them and all that. So you can see down here, we have a lot of different blocks of our different ores and stuff, right? Uh, so copper, yeah, we're gonna need a bunch of those. So let's see, we need a total of 10 and you get, I think three per ingot. So we can assume three ingots per. So we need like 30 ingots worth. Eh, it's gonna be less than 30 ingots, but we'll just go ahead and extrude out 30 anyway, because we are gonna want copper wires and stuff for crafting recipes and so on and so forth. So it's gonna be just fine. So yeah, we need to come over here to our metal former and go to the extruding setting. It's gonna extrude out wires of copper, right? And then we get three per ingot, yeah. So that's gonna be pretty good. All right, well, this is gonna take a little bit of time to chew through all of these. I'll go ahead and get 10 of these coils made up. We'll throw them into our electric heater and then we'll see if we get some HUs being generated. All right, guys, so we ended up with 10 extra copper cables. That's fine, we're gonna use these later anyway. And we have all 10 of our coils in the electric heater, uh, but it's not really doing anything. Uh, one thing I did do is I put the universal fluid cell back through the compressor a few times and filled up the internal air amount in the blast furnace. You can just shift click it in here it goes into this slot, that's the input, and then it fills up this, and then this is the output right here for the empty fluid cell. So anyway, I did that a few times, it holds eight buckets, and now we're waiting on it to use something, uh, and then this one will empty out and fill up the internal inventory. Anyway, so this is all set and ready to go. I'm not seeing any heat being made or being used, nothing's being made over here. I assume it waits until we have a valid recipe and then I'll start generating heat, right? We don't have a valid recipe in there. So I was just looking, um, well, we didn't claim our reward, so let's do that. Let's take the top loot chest and let's pop it. We get congealed purple slime block. Okay, we get purple slime. That's kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, going back to the quests here, in order to unlock this, we also needed advanced alloy. I did not, I didn't notice this one earlier. So yeah, we have to make advanced alloy. So let's take a look at this advanced alloy. In order to make this guy, we need to make a mixed metal ingot and then put it through a compressor. Easy. So the mixed metal ingot, that is three iron plates, three bronze, and three tin plates. Well, we have all these materials. It's just a matter of making them. So, yeah. Uh, bronze, we have quite a lot of somewhere around here. Oh, my goodness, I'm blind. Okay. Huh. We're going to make a few of those because I know we're going to need them. So there is nine bronze. Let's do nine copper. Wait, was it copper? No. Iron and tin. Iron and tin. Do we have tin down here? There's a block of tin. There's a block of iron. So now we have nine of each of those. Okay. So now we have to go run those through our metal former on the plate form setting. Is it called plate form? Again, I can never remember these settings. The rolling setting. We need to run it through this, all nine of those, turn those into the mixed metal ingots, and then run the resulting mixed metal ingots through our 
compressor here. Anyway, so let's go ahead and wait for all of this to happen, and we'll be back, guys. All right, and there's the last of the advanced alloys that we're making. All right, so that should complete the quest. We only needed one of those for the quest completion. And let's do middle loot chests. We'll just keep doing like a round robin. So lapis block, gold encrusted. Okay, so that is a chisel block. I think we can unchisel that if we wanted to and then turn that back into regular lapis. We'll probably end up doing that. I don't really need decoration lapis blocks for anything. Uh, so advanced alloys, that does unlock the ability for us to do the advanced machine casing. All right, so it says this is a crafting ingredient needed to craft higher tier industrial craft machines as well as being the main ingredient in the industrial foregoing machine case. Uh-huh. So advanced machine casing. So in order to make one of these, we do need the advanced alloys, which we just made. We need the basic machine casing. We need steel plates. And then we need carbon plates. So carbon plates, if I remember correctly, requires a lot of coal. Is it coal? Pretty sure it's coal. Uh, let's look at the macerator here. So you can do a block of coal, turn into nine pulverized coal, or just one to one pulverized coal. So that is four coal to make one carbon fiber. So then you need eight coal to make one raw carbon mesh. That is compressed into the carbon plate. Okay, so we need 16 coal in order to make an advanced machine casing. That's really not that bad. 16 coal, two steel, or I'm sorry, four steel plates, two advanced alloys, and then the basic machine casing. Uh, I believe we have plenty of steel over here that we can compress down into those plates. Yep, so there is four of those. And then we need 16 coal, which should be fairly trivial for us to do. There we go. So we need to put the coal in the macerator. Let's get that going right here. And I'm going to steal these things out of here and put that into the macerator, speed this up. Since that's going to take way longer than compressing down, or I guess uh, rolling four steel ingots into plates. Okay, let's wait for the rest of this processing to happen, then we'll continue on. All right, guys, so the crafting's all been done. We are ready to go with the advanced machine casing, and there it is. Awesome. So that should complete yet another quest for us. We're getting all the quests knocked out today, which is great. So advanced machine, we'll do the bottom loot chest. Let's try this one. Hopefully it's the best thing ever, and it is an elytra. Okay. Uh... From Colitra? I don't know. Bobble body. What? Body. Here? Ah, okay. Well, I don't know. Does this thing like still take durability damage when you fly with it? How does it work? Yeah, hold space, double tap space while you're flying. Uh, are we taking any durability damage? Hmm. I guess we might be able to do it this way. Okay. So we did a little bit of flying. Does it? It does use durability. Okay. Uh, probably not a thing we're gonna be using too much. Like obviously the elytra is really good for uh, vanilla Minecraft, but since we have the hang glider, which it just takes up an inventory slot, right? <laughs> uh, and we have unlimited use with it. I don't really see us ever using the elytra at all. So I'll just throw it in here for safekeeping. We might use it at some point. I doubt it. We'll see. So yeah, that's all done. So that unlocks a few more paths here, but honestly, we are only making the advanced machine casing because we wanted to make ourselves an inscriber from Applied Energistics, right? So the inscriber requires the machine case, which is reinforced stone plus some plastic. So the reinforced stone, as we saw before, is stone plus grout plus clay dust. So let's see if we can work on making that. We already have grout. Uh, we should have some stone here. We do. And then we need clay dust, which you know, we can get pretty easily here. Wink. Okay, so macerator on the clay. Let me grab the speed upgrades again. Or the overclock upgrades, I guess. So there we go. There is four clay dust. Wink. All right, so now we should be able to... Oh, we needed... Um, Oh, we have to make a few things here. We have to make this, the reinforced stone. So there's that. There's one part. And then we needed four more rubber. Okay. So then we should be able to make this guy. Awesome. So there's a machine case. 
from Tesla Core Lib. So we just unlocked Industrial Four going apparently. Uh, yeah. So in order to unlock Applied Energistics, oh, actually, it looks like we just unlocked it, isn't it? Uh, there is no Applied Energistics chapter, but Immersive Engineering, Industrial Craft, Forestry, actually, Additions, and Industrial Foregoing open up for the mod. You only have to obtain either the Controller or the Energy Acceptor to complete this quest. Okay. And that's going to give us a choice of these different pure items. Okay, that's that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Um, yep, that's where I wanted to go. So let's see what we can do here. So we unlocked, actually, uh, let me go back in here real quick. So under gates, yeah, we unlocked this. So we have an item reward. We can do an infinite water source, a latex processing unit, or one more machine case. Well, I think if we're going to do any of those, we need to take a look at the infinite water source. How expensive is that? And is it like the top tier one? No, I think it was just this one, right? The bottom tier one. So that's basic plating, which is lead item casing, lead sheet metal. So that's four lead plus the graphite block. How do we get graphite? Looks like that turns directly into it. And graphite is from smelting graphite dust, graphite bar. How do you get graphite in this mod pack? I wonder graphite ingots. Ah, okay. So you smelt down charcoal or coal into graphite. And it looks like those turn into each other. Yeah, okay. So you melt down coal to get graphite. Uh, and then it's a little bit of lead more. So all in all, the infinite water source really isn't that expensive. Okay, so we got that figured out. If we look in here, latex processing. Is this thing expensive? It is some iron. It's a machine case. Okay, so this is a little expensive. Uh, some furnaces, iron gears, and this is probably a thing that we're going to want because a latex processing unit will allow us to take rubber, which is extracted, or I guess latex, which is extracted from trees, and turn it into the dry rubber, which turns into the plastic. Oh, boy. It's another one of those things like, I don't know which one to choose. Maybe we'll just wait until later. And then we could just get the machine case itself, which is already a part of this recipe. You know what? I'm just going to take the latex. Oh, item reward. <laughs> I was thinking this was a choice reward. We get all three of these guys. Okay. So there really isn't a choice to be made here. Yeah. We just get all of those items. Mm -hmm. So we have an extra machine case, which is great. We have an infinite water, which is fine. Yeah, the mod packs that do that, where it's like choice reward, choice reward, and then they show you three items. It's like, okay, so which one am I going to choose? And you get all of them at the same time. It's just kind of like, yeah, it throws you for a loop, or at least it does me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so now that we are done with that, we have progressed through industrial craft to where we need to be. Um, yeah, let's go back into here. I'm going to press the up key a little bit to get to my previous searches. So we should be able to do everything sticky piston. Yeah, we can make those, not a big deal. So Fluex is probably our next hard stop here. So in order to make Fluex, we need to take redstone, nether quartz, and charged certus quartz and drop it into water. Now, do we have any charged certus quartz? I don't think we do. So that means that we have to make ourselves a charger. Well, let's take a look at that, charger. In order to make a charger, we have to have Fluex. <laughs> okay, so we are at a stop right now where we have to find charged Certus Quartz. We have regular stuff, but the only way to find charged Certus Quartz is by mining. Let's take a look at charged Certus Quartz ore. Does this show us like where in the world we can find it? So Luna, Stella, Venus, Kepler, Novus, Overworld. So it looks like the best place is between well diamond level really between 11 and 23 yeah it looks like anywhere in here is going to be just fine it is a very low drop rate and you are going to want to use fortune three on it yeah uh all right so next stop i guess i'm going to go down into the mine see if we can find some charge to this quartz get that uh and get that fortuned up, and we'll see if we can continue on. 
Wow, this took a long time to find, and believe it or not, uh, it was actually in a place that I had previously explored. So I went through our branch mine where I did the two by one, we were doing the poke holes, right? This was a cave that I had found a while ago. I just got done going all the way down and like, I actually went pretty far here. Can I see the cave layers? Uh, where are we? Can I follow? Okay. So yeah, you can see that I went pretty far all the way down here. <laughs> um, where's the stairway? I'm not sure. I think this is the stairs right here. So yeah, this is where we ended the branch mine. So I went all the way down here looking for uh, charged Certus Quartz. I didn't see any. I didn't see any regular Quartz or any of the regular Certus Quartz. I didn't find any charged Certus Quartz. I found 86 diamonds over nearly 2,000 redstone, a whole lot of material. But yeah, it wasn't until just uh, for the heck of it, I came down here. I was like, what was down here? And I just saw that as I was coming down here. So let's pop this open. Shocking. We get six charged Certus Quartz. Oop, left a red spot here. Yeah. Oh, you know what? This is where I came through. This whole area here was full. Of, uh, yeah, this was full of lava. This is where I was mining all of that obsidian before, and I left that because I felt like I'd gotten way too much at that point. And you see there's a piece of obsidian here. Then I came into this area. Even more lava in the bottom of this ravine. So if we ever wanted to make some more obsidian, yeah, that's where we would get it from. Anyway, so we have the charged sort of quartz now that we need in order to proceed to make ourselves some of the Fluex. And with the Fluex, we'll make ourselves a charger so we never have to do this again. Because goodness, that is really, really low percent chance finding the charged sort of quartz. They weren't joking when they said it was like a 0.01% or something. Ah. So yes, we have the charged sort of quartz. So let's go back here to the charger. The charger needs two Fluex. And then it needs five iron. So yeah, the Fluex, we need one charge, one nether quartz, one redstone. We have all this stuff. Let's get that going here. So there's the redstone, there's the charge, and then the nether quartz. Right there. Okay, I couldn't find it. <laughs> uh, so now we need a spot to throw this in water. I guess we can just throw it right here. It doesn't have to be anything special. So we'll just Q, 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 and I'll hold shift so that doesn't get put into my inventory. There you go. So now we get two Fluex Crystal for doing that. And then we needed, what was it, five iron, I said? All right, and then we can make ourselves a charger. Boom, there it is. All right, so now with the charger, I think you can hook that up directly to RF. I don't think you need, like, applied energistics power in order to run that thing. Uh, so we might have, yeah, this clockwork engine here. Let's check this thing out. I'm going to place this down. Oh, I guess it doesn't want to face up. Uh, how do we do this? I guess I'll put the charger like so, and I'll stick this on top maybe, and then I'll face it down on top. Okay. So yeah, let's charge this thing up. We'll just hold right click until it turns red, and then we should be able to turn it off. Yeah, so that's putting power in there, so you can see it holds 3.2 thousand RF, and we currently have like half that in there. Uh, so if I put a Certus crystal in there, let's try this real quick. We do have a bunch of Certus. I should just be able to right click one in there. And then eventually, yep, that just turned into a charged one so I can right click that out. And now we have six of the charged ones again. Okay, very, very good. So we have a way of making that stuff going forward, which is fantastic. All right, so now that we have the charged Certus Quartz figured out, uh, we should be able to go back and look at making the Inscriber, which required us to have Two more of those recipes of the flux or fluex done. So we need two of those, two of these, two redstone. I'll go ahead and finish all of this up and we'll continue on, guys. All right, guys. So now we have everything together in order to make an inscriber. And there we go. Uh, I don't know if there's a quest for that. I don't think there was. Let's try placing the inscriber down here. That does say KRF. So, whoop. <laughs> Wrong tool. <laughs> Let me put the uh, single breaking pick right there. And then we'll grab our clockwork engine. We'll place it on top of here. We'll just go ahead and hold right click on this guy a little bit again. We'll make sure it turns red. And we'll make sure that this thing does accept power. It does. That is fantastic. 
Okay, so we have an inscriber. We have a charger. They both accept uh, RF, which is great. Uh, the next step is we need to go get ourselves the presses. So pretty much what we have to do at this point is go to our world map. We'll click follow. Let's find the closest meteor from Applied Energistics. I think it's this one right here. So I need to go to the northwest a little bit. Let's go over there. Am I facing the right direction? I am. Yeah, we'll head over that direction and we will see what we can see here. Hopefully we'll get the inscriber presses in there. I don't know if that's what they contain, but like I said earlier, if there are meteors and there's like really no other way to make those things, that is generally speaking how you get the inscribers. So let's, or the inscriber presses, I should say. And we can mine this, it's only osmium. I'll just go ahead and bane mine that. What is that sound? I'm not sure what that sound was. <laughs> that scared me though. Uh, yeah, so inscriber calculation press, then we get some of these other things. Awesome. Uh, I don't think we need the Skystone chest for any particular reason, but I will grab it anyway. I did grab it. Yes. Okay. Does it make that sound every time you mine these things? I'm not sure what that sound was. Was there like some of the weird fire and ice monsters around that was making that sound? I honestly don't know. Where are my repair kits? I'm not seeing them. Oh, they're right here. <laughs> First slot in my inventory. Like, where are they? I can't see them. Okay, so now that we have that, we have to go around to the other meteors that are around. Looks like that is not one. There is one way over here. Let's head over that way. So I just need, need to go over to the west quite a bit. Uh, sometimes you can get lucky and find multiple of the presses in a meteor. So you could potentially, I think, find all four of them in one if you get like really, really lucky. Generally speaking, you get like one to two. Uh, I think you're always guaranteed one, but there is no real way to guarantee that you'll get one that you haven't gotten before. So yeah, you are really going to have to explore around and find these things. Um, there's also, I think it's called a meteor compass or something. Oh, here's the, uh, pyramid. Yeah. That's that pyramid that I was talking about at the start. Uh, how far away? Oh yeah. It's, uh, over here. I was like, how far away are we from where I was trying to go? <laughs> Didn't really mean to go to the pyramid, but yeah, there are cave spider spawners in here. You can see them on the mini map and hear them. All right, so let's go over here. Hopefully we'll find this meteor real quick, jump or break into it and see what it has in store for us. Was it over here? Oh boy. Oh, I can see on the mini map. There it is right in front of us. Okay, we'll try this one more time. Hopefully we'll get a good amount of stuff from this one. Just vein mine it all. Okay, so there's a chest. And we get the silicon press and more skystone. Yay. <laughs> okay, well, not exactly all the parts we need. I just need to go around and do this a little bit more. I'll do the rest of these off camera. And in fact, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and call it an episode here. Yep, we got some good progress going on. We started into Applied Energistics. A little bit longer from now, we'll have our digital storage, hopefully next episode. But yep, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.